G'day, welcome back to RC Model Reviews. And of course, the big news of the day is the release of the Fat Shark Digital FPV goggles with a built-in video system, digitally based, that looks a lot like DJI. But according to an interview conduct, well, in an interview conducted by uh, Joshua Bardwell with Greg from Fat Shark, Greg steadily, steadfastly denied that these were DJI. Not DJI, he said. Joshua Bardwell wasn't so sure towards the end. He said, raise the point, hey, maybe it is DJI. And so people have been emailing me saying, you know, come on, what do you think? What do you think? What's going on? Is it DJI? What's involved here? Now, I've got no information other than what I've collected from the public arena. So I can't give you any uh, informed insights, but I can speculate just like everybody else on the internet is doing it. By the way, top videos to watch Joshua's um, release of this product, his, his thing from the, the Rampage. And... Ian Lewis from Mads Tech or Mads RC, go and look at his video. He's done some great speculation as well. We're all speculating. We don't know for sure, but I'm going to tell you what I think. Uh, I think I should have turned my phone off before I started making this video. Never mind. Um, we're looking at a new set of goggles, and Greg, in the interview with Joshua, said, uh, we, we make the goggles, we partner with other companies for the video transmitters receivers. We've always done that. We've never made the video, the, the, the RF side of things, and that gives us a bit of insight, because obviously what's happening here is Fat Shark have produced a new set of goggles, OLED goggles, good resolution, they look nice, ergonomic, you know, lovely, one of the best-looking sets of goggles they've ever made, top marks, they've even got a power button. They've even carried that forward from earlier versions. Fantastic. Um, but they are using another company or partnering with another company for the digital goodness inside. So we have to now look, what would that company be and why would um, they be partnering? And is it DJI? Well, I, I've, it looks like DJI. Let's face it. The whole thing, has it, it looks like, tastes like, smells like DJI. But is it? And who is this partner that Greg wouldn't talk about? And there's a thing called Walk Snail, which uh, Ian Lewis did, looked around and found that it's actually related to Caddx. And we know that Caddx have been selling uh, rebranded DJI digital systems, the, the, the uh, video transmitters. So what's going on here? Now, there's, there's a couple of uh, possible ways we can speculate. It is possible that Greg wasn't telling the whole truth, and this actually is the new much-awaited DJI version 3 FPV system, or, or version 2, depending on how you look at it. It may be that this actually is DJI system. And if we look at the way it works, it works exactly like the DJI system. Now, I did a video a while ago comparing a couple of video systems, the HD0 and the DJI. I did a little block door diagrams on the whiteboard. If you haven't seen that, go and have a look because it'll explain how the DJI works and how it differs from other digital video systems. Now, when you look at that video, you can see it's not actually that complex. There's really just a, a whole lot of different blocks that uh, most of them are available off the shelf. The only secret source is the way that it's all connected together with the DJI logic. So it is not beyond the realms of possibility that CADEX have been looking at how DJI systems works and said we can build something that will be inspired by we won't say clone of or copy of but inspired by DJI using the same um, variable bitrate adaptive technology bi-directional system that DJI use any company could develop this if they apply enough time effort and money to it maybe Cadex did and what they've done is produced this digital system and then said to Fat Shark we'll let you put it in your goggles and maybe that's the partner. Of course, as when I say Caddx, I'm talking about Walk Snail, which is a separate company. It's, it's all very, you know, hard to follow. Um, but that's one option. That this, in fact, is not DJI. It is actually a new entry, or not a new entry, but it's, it is Caddx who have reverse engineered to a degree, perhaps, or maybe just redesigned from scratch using the same techniques to produce a system that looks very similar and functions very similar to DJI system. If that's the case, well, then it's really interesting times ahead for the industry because I'm pretty sure that Caddx wouldn't limit themselves to only supplying Fat Shark with this technology. I would expect to see Skyzone goggles coming out with this technology and maybe, maybe even Orca, because Orca have been saying, we've got a new digital system coming. Has Orca been talking to Caddx behind the scenes and arranging a deal so that we'll see a Orca version of the Caddx system? Nobody knows, it's only speculation. But there is another option, and this is something I think we need to look very closely at. Another piece of speculation, no one else seems to have covered this, 
I'm going to. And one of the problems DJI has in the US market is that the US government is pretty anti-DJI. The um, organizations or federal agencies with government funding are not allowed to buy DJI drones or use DJI drones because of the fears, the paranoia of the US government. This data is going to be sent back to China and it's going to be, you know, can't use it. So if you're federally funded or if you're a government agency, you can't use DJI drones. They're on the blacklist, you know. In fact, there's actually a blue list of, of drones that can be used, and DJI is not on it for security reasons. So, therefore, it becomes difficult for DJI to sell any kind of FPV equipment into the into the U.S. military, or not military, but the U.S. government. And that includes military. It does include military. And this is where I'm going. If we look. Fat Shark was recently acquired by Red Cat Holdings. Now, Red Cat Holdings, they've acquired quite a bit of stuff. One of the things under their umbrella is Teal. And Teal is a military drone company. They sell a lot of drones to the military. So they couldn't possibly use DJI, or what seemed to be DJI, in their FPV systems that might work with these drones because it's on the blacklist. It's not allowed. You can't buy DJI stuff. So what better way to use the technology than to get DJI in through a third party to produce the technology and then have it come out not as DJI but as Walksnail. Suddenly you've dodged the DJI ban and you're able to get your DJI, effectively DJI gear, into the military contracts. Could that be the case? Could that be what's happened? I wouldn't be surprised but I have no way of confirming that at all. But go and look at the, the profile of Red Cat Holdings. They've got Teal, and they've got on the website, there's a couple of military guys there flying a drone. And you know that FPV is an important part of drone technology, even in the military and commercial. So they're trying to secure their thing. Another thing, though, is there's a huge resentment, a huge kickback against DJI in some sectors of the FPV community. A lot of people would rather fly analog than fly D DJI digital. So again, it produces a barrier to the market. If you can take DJI stuff, repackage it in a way that it, you can claim it's not DJI, it's not DJI, then you're going to get more, more buy-in by the general FPV community. Those who would never buy DJI FPV will buy Fat Shark because it's, we know, and they're not, they're not DJI. So is this just a bit of smoke and mirrors to get DJI technology in the back door into the military contracts and into the FPV market that's resistant to DJI? I have no idea. As I said, I'm speculating here, but I think it's a pretty reasonable possibility. I think we should look into that further as, as time goes on. But now let's talk about the system and, and what it offers and how it might change the entire market. Well, the system is functionally equivalent to DJI. It may be improved in some ways. Um, and Greg was saying there's no fixed latency version, but he hopes that will come. Uh, that's really the distinction between HD0 and DJI is, is the fixed latency thing. And of course, fixed latency is really, really important to races. So DJI, the, the, sorry, the HD0 system is developing quite a strong niche in the, in the drone racing community, although a lot of people still fly analog. So who's going to be the winners? Who's going to be the losers? Well, I think right now, Carl at HD0 must be not very happy because he's worked very hard to build, try and get a groundswell, a critical mass of people using his system. And you, you need a critical mass. You need people to invest in so much money in your system that they're not going to throw it all away and rebuy on a new system. I don't know that they've achieved that because they've had chip shortages, they've had non-availability of product. So even when people wanted to get heavily into HD0, haven't been able to. So people have only got a relatively light investment in HD0. So a lot of those will be, if this new system lives up to the claims and it's not DJI, a lot of those people will jump ship, I think, and go to the new system, whereas they wouldn't have gone to DJI. It's it's going to be hard times ahead for HD0. I hope um, that Carl has the support within his community to keep going. But I, I would be very, very concerned Especially because we know that if you buy the HD0 goggles, they're probably only going to do HD0. And if you buy the Fat Shark digital goggles, they're only going to do Fat Shark digital because they don't even have an AV input. So this is you're going to have to choose a choose a path. I mean, previously, if you wanted to, you could fly um, analog or HD0. You buy simply buying a set of Sky Zones or Fat Sharks and using the HDMI in with a video receiver. These are, these options are sort of disappearing now. People are locking you into their goggles. You're going to have to choose a digital system because that's built into the goggles. It's not an add-on if you want to choose a new digital system. Even the old DJI goggles have got analog in, but the new Fat Sharks don't have that option. Once you buy Fat Shark Digital, you're Fat Shark Digital. That's it. You're locked in from that point on. Um, although as 
uh, Greg said, to his credit, well, if you want to fly analog, you've probably still got your old analogs. And that's unless people sell their analogs to buy the fat sharks, which they might have to do. We don't know what the, I don't know what the prices are. It's not available for pre-order, but I haven't even looked because I'm too scared. Um, yeah, so this is this is going to be extremely interesting as we move ahead. And if if this new walk snail isn't licensing the video receiver technology to other goggle manufacturers, then I don't know what Skyzone is going to do. They could try and hitch their wagon up to uh, HD Zero, but HD Zero is doing their own goggles. It's like it's interesting to all these companies. I have a feeling we're going to see it all play out. This is the way I think it will go. Now, I believe that this technology is being manufactured by Cadex marketed as walk snail this is the video transmitter receiver and that it is I, there's, there's a fairly good chance that dji are involved and this is the smoke and mirrors they're using to make sure they're not going to be blocked from those lucrative military contracts and other federal contracts in the usa because fpv is going to play an important role otherwise they're locked out so i think it could be but there is the possibility that Cadex has just said, look, you know, we're going to throw the money at this. We're going to develop a completely functional equivalent system to DJI and go with it. And what is what is DJI going to do? In, DJI going to do in response? Well, I, I think DJI might actually drop FPV because why would if Cadex is doing a better job? DJI they only have one FPV drone, and there's been the pushback from the community, and people will probably prefer to buy. The, the the Fat Shark or Skyzone or whatever goggles have that system built in than to buy DJI for all the reasons I've mentioned before. So it could be the end of DJI rolling out new products. We don't know. But what if you've got a set of DJI goggles or like me, you've got two sets. Oh my God, my world has come to an end. No, it hasn't. Now what if you've got two sets of DJI goggles like me, set of analog goggles, HD Zero receiver? What does this mean to people like us? Are we going to have to sell all our gear? No, no, because the the gear you're using now will still work just as well tomorrow as it did yesterday. This this new system is not going to change anything there. Um, it may offer benefits and performance advantages and things that you might want, but trust me, I'm a guy that still flies a lot of analog, and, and despite the fact that so many people say digital is so much better, I still fly analog because every system has a niche. Every system has strengths and weaknesses. And... I was at the workshop yesterday looking at uh, some of my models and I looked at my Mini Racewing which has got a crappy old CCD camera on it and a crappy old 200 milliwatt analog transmitter and I was thinking maybe, maybe I should put digital in this and then I stopped for a moment and said don't be stupid. The, the whole part of the appeal of this particular model is it's got about $40 worth of FPV equipment in it. If I lose it or if I smack it into a tree and destroy everything I'm not going to be too upset by that. Plus the fact that the, the analog is part of the visceral experience. This thing is so exciting to fly at low altitude. And the fact that sometimes your the picture is replaced by snow, it's part of the experience. And the fact that the picture is so coarse and, and not very high resolution means that when I finish my flight and I get home, I can watch it all again, relive it from a different perspective through the HD recording camera if I've got it fitted on the, on the day. These are things that, that digital don't offer me in that. So I'm not going to ruin my wonderful analog experience by putting digital in there. I'll save the digital for other things where it really has a benefit, such as my, my cinequads when I want to do some wonderful panoramic cinematic footage and I want to make sure I've got everything queued up and the lights right and the colors are good. That's when I use digital because I'm going to be using that to sort of preview what I'm finally going to be um, getting out of my other camera. And that's, that's it's, it's strengths and weaknesses, strengths and weaknesses. So, yeah, if you are already heavily into one of the other options, don't don't fret, don't worry. You may upgrade in a year or two's time, but don't think you have to rush out now and spend your money because as Joshua Bardwell said, this is still pretty rough around the edges. It's got a lot of work before it's finished. You can pre-order, but I, I, I'm always reluctant to advise people to pre-order anything until we've actually seen it, until it's been in our hands, until I've had a chance to put it on the bench, fly it, and just test it out. I would never recommend people rush out and buy stuff. Don't don't have that fear of missing out thing. Oh, if I don't pre-order it, I may not get it. Doesn't matter. You're still flying FPV. You're enjoying what you're doing. It doesn't matter if the pre-order sells out and you have to wait six months to buy a set. You're still going to have fun. But if the whole thing turns to custard and it doesn't work and there's early adopter issues, well, you'll have missed those. You'll have skipped them. And that's not a bad thing. But there you go. That's all I can tell you about this system. As I said before, there are videos you can go and watch from Joshua Bardwell and from Ian of Mads Tech or Mad RC. And they will give you some more insight. But I just want to raise that issue about Red Cat Holdings and their part, their part in this and how this may be a clever scheme to dodge the ban on DJI for the contracts that they have with military or the, the 
prospect of contracts with the military and government organizations to use this, uh, what is effectively OcuSync technology in those particular places. Tell me what you think. Go down to the comment bit down here. Have I stumbled onto something that could be the facts or what's, what, what's going on? Have, do you think that um, CADEX have actually designed a system from the ground up, heavily inspired by the DJI system? Or is it just pure chance? <laughs> what do we know? We know that we don't know enough. But stay tuned, subscribe. As soon as I know stuff, I'll pass it on to you so you'll know stuff. And thank you to my Patreon supporters. I, must, I will have to rely heavily on you. I don't know if they're going to send, I doubt I'll get sent a set of these goggles from any of the manufacturers and the video receivers, transmitters. I may have to go out and buy them myself, make a mistake for you if it's a mistake or, you know, well, I don't know. But hopefully they will be in touch with me because I'd really like to keep you in touch as the objective um, purveyor of information. I, I don't have any feet in any camps. I fly HD0, I fly DJI Digital, I fly analog, and I don't make money out of any of them. So I'm happy to recommend whichever is best solely on the basis of its mirrors, not on the basis of affiliate link in the description. There you go. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. And now I'll go do some more research, shall I? Bye for now.